Welcome, health conscious viewers, to Vegetarianism, the Noble Way of Living. On our special episodes today and Wednesday, titled Food for Breast Cancer Survival, we are featuring Food for Life recipes from the Cancer Project, which is affiliated with the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, or PCRM. The Cancer Project promotes cancer prevention and survival through a better understanding of cancer causes, particularly the link between nutrition and cancer. Registered dietitian Stephanie Bina and Chef Sualua Tupelo will present low-fat, entirely vegan, and absolutely tasty dishes to enrich our health and lives with better food choices. You've likely seen a lot of information on breast cancer, its causes, and approaches that might prevent it. Today we're cooking with foods that can actually help you fight this terrible disease. Our menu today is a cold beet salad. Beets are loaded with bioflavonoids, reason enough to let them star in their own salad. Next, we'll make cauliflower with sesame salt to give a healthy vegetable a unique twist. For our main dish, We'll put homestyle squash and pinto beans over toasted couscous, which is a pleasing way to get lots of fiber. And for dessert, we'll enjoy crisp apples blended with the robust taste of seasonal berries in our berry apple sauce. What a better way to cleanse the palate and bring extra vitamin C into our diets. Have you ever had a bad experience using canned beets? Today, we're going to be preparing a cold beet salad using fresh beets. And when picking our beets, I like to find nice beets that, have, that are still, the greens are on them, and that they're still crispy, and make sure that they're not bruised. I like to use a plastic cutting board, but when they're not available, and only a wooden cutting board's available, I like to take some mineral oil and put it on the board and coat it. That way it doesn't stain, the stain doesn't stay on there, okay? I like to wear gloves so I don't stain my hands as well. But if you are using it without in gloves, you can put some lemon juice on it. Just wash it with a little lemon juice, that will work. So what we're gonna do is take our tops off by just cutting straight down. I like to take this little part off here where the stem is, and then just take our knife and just peel it. Our peeler, that is, and we'll just peel it. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I like to cut mine in wedges. And the reason why I like to do that is because canned beets come sliced round. So I like to really make it distinguish that this does not resemble something that came out of a can. So I like to cut them in wedges. And then from there, we'll just put them in our steamer here. And I have some steamed, do you see that? And you see how beautiful that looks? You know, nice steamed beets. We're just gonna put this in back here and keep them warm before we make our salad dressing. The ingredients I'm using is fresh lemon juice for our citrus, mm -hmm. okay? We have some uh, stone ground mustard. We have a little apple cider vinegar, some dill weed, and some apple juice concentrate. So let's put it together. First thing I'll do is put our mustard in. We'll add our lemon juice. Our apple cider vinegar. Our dill. And our apple juice concentrate. What other herbs might you use? Well, you can put tarragon in it, or you can put a combination of herbs, you know, sweet basil, parsley, dill. Mm -hmm. any, any combination of three herbs will work well. Yeah. Well, Chef, I really like your dressing recipe. You've noticed that there's no added fat because there's no oil, which means that this recipe is virtually fat-free. Okay, so now that our dressing is made, what we're going to do is put our warm beets right into our dressing. And I like to um, put my beets in my dressing while they're still warm because the pores of the beets are just, you know, nice and open and it's ready just to absorb all those flavors that we have, the citrus flavor that we have from the lemon. 
the sweet tanginess from our apple concentrate. And it complements the sweet flavor, the bold sweet flavor from, uh, from our beets. So we'll just toss this around here. I like to pair lemon juice and beets as well, but I also like to use a low-fat or fat-free balsamic dressing. That's nice on beets, too. We have just a bit of, of uh, fresh spinach there, and I'm going to just take some of our, our beets, and we'll just put it right on top of there. And I'll just put a little sprig of fresh dill. It's so colorful and that dill smells so good. Our next dish is cauliflower with sesame salt. Sometimes you're just looking for a quick way to add vegetables to your meal. Our cauliflower with sesame salt is just the thing. Chef, how do you make it? We'll start off with fresh cauliflower. We have some sesame seeds and then we have some sea salt. So what I like to do is to start off by cleaning my cauliflower. And let me just show you how to do that. We take our cauliflower here, and I'm just going to take the end off. Once we have the end off, we'll go ahead and look at it if they're in good condition. You can always chop these greens up and add them to a stir fryer or something like that. So we'll just set them aside. We'll take our parry knife, looking at the stem here, we'll just cut around it and cut inwards. I have my knife at an angle like this. So what we're gonna do here is just cut around. And you see how the florets just pop right out of there. There you go. Now I'll just break this down just a little bit more just to get them even pieces. And I have some in our steamer already prepared. And what I did with this is I soaked it in a little ice water with little lemon juice just to give it that nice white color while I'm, before I steam it. So that lemon juice will help to keep the cauliflower nice and white. So we'll just put this back here and we'll set this off to the side while we saute our sesame seeds. And basically what I mean by that is we're going to toast it and we're going to, to dry toast our sesame seeds right in our saute pan. So what we're going to do here is take our sesame seeds and we're going to put them into our pan. And we're just going to dry roast or dry toast this right into our pan. Okay. And you can tell as the seed starts to get nice and brown, that's when it's ready. You can smell the fragrance from it and you can smell that nice nutty uh, smell of sesame. And we're using unhauled um, sesame seeds today. And is there a reason for that? Well, the, the unhauled hasn't been, uh, the hull hasn't been removed, so you have more nutrients in it. It's more intact, okay? You can smell it, can't you smell that? That nice smell coming out of here. And see how nice they're browning already, okay? So you don't have to wait till they start to pop? Well, I like some to pop, but I, I'm looking for the color. Right when mm -hmm. you get that color, you oh, also get that. Now. Yeah, you also get that popping. It's, you want to make sure you don't burn it, so just move it, move the pan around. Okay. And that looks like about right. It, you smell it, it's nice and brown color here, so that's great. So, so what we're gonna do is just put it into our, our food grinder here. I'm using a coffee um, uh, grinder today, and you these are, these are good for making smaller portions. If I were doing a larger portion, I would, um, I would definitely uh, get uh, a Vitamix or something like that. Okay, so we'll just put this in to our coffee grinder here. Okay, and we'll be adding a little sea salt to that. You know, this is a good tip. I use a coffee grinder at home to grind my spices. Yeah, you can grind your spices, you know, get like coriander mm -hmm. seeds and cardamom pods and all that. Put it right in here. 
it's, it works really good for that, your freshly dried herbs and things like that. Then we'll just pulse it a couple times. And that's basically it. You can see the nice thing. Smell it that? smells very nutty. Okay. About how long does it take cauliflower to steam? Uh, no more than 10 minutes. You don't really want it to where it's completely uh, mush. So you want to just get it to where it's... We'll take our nice cauliflower. See how you can, you can feel this. It's still nice and crunchy. See mm -hmm. that? Yeah. So. Okay. And we'll just mound that up nicely. Now we'll take some of our sesame salt here. Our sesame salt. Then we're going to just put some of this black sesame seeds on top. I like to take a, a lemon and just put some nice lemon pieces around it. And that's basically it for our cauliflower sesame summer. Please come back Wednesday, August 17th, to join Chef Sua Lua Tupelo and registered dietitian Stephanie Baina from The Cancer Project as they show us how to make squash and pinto beans over toasted couscous with berry apple sauce. We'll see you soon on Vegetarianism, the Noble Way of Living, here on Supreme Master Television. Up next is Between Master and Disciples. May health and happiness be the constant companions in your life. For more information on The Cancer Project and Food for Life, please visit cancerproject.org, foodforlifetv.org, or call 001-202-244-5038 to learn more about how a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and beans can help you prevent cancer. visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash VEG. Meat costs and vegan savings. A meat-free vegetarian diet drastically reduces carbon footprint. Over a one-year period per person, emissions from a meat-based diet is equivalent to driving a mid-sized car 4,758 kilometers. Emissions from a vegetarian diet is equivalent to 2,427 kilometers, nearly 50% less. Emissions from an animal-free vegan diet is equivalent to 629 kilometers, one-seventh of the amount of a meat-based diet, or 87% less. Emissions from an organic vegan diet is 281 kilometers, 94% less emissions than that of a meat-based diet. Animal-free vegan diet can reduce dietary greenhouse gases by up to 94%. Be veg, go green to save the planet. For more urgent details, please visit suprememastertv.com.
forward slash SOS. Greetings and welcome to Vegetarianism, the Noble Way of Living. Continuing our special episode from Monday titled, Food for Breast Cancer Survival, we are featuring Food for Life recipes from The Cancer Project, which is affiliated with the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, or PCRM. The Cancer Project promotes cancer prevention and survival through a better understanding of cancer causes, particularly the link between nutrition and cancer. Registered dietitian Stephanie Bina and Chef Sualua Tupelo will present low-fat, entirely vegan, and absolutely tasty dishes to enrich our health and lives with better food choices. Our main course today is homestyle squash and pinto beans. We're going to be serving that over some toasted couscous. This recipe is loaded with fiber, and fiber helps our bodies get rid of excess estrogen. The liver sends unneeded estrogen into our intestinal tract, and when fiber is present, it soaks it up and carries it out of the body. But if fiber is not present, then the excess estrogen gets reabsorbed into the bloodstream. You mentioned loaded with fiber. Let's take a look at these ingredients. We have our squash, we have our tomatoes, some jalapenos, garlic, some thyme, corn, pinto beans, onions, and vegetable broth. Shall we put it together? Show me how. Okay, what we're gonna do is start off by sauteing our onions and garlic. Let's check our fire. Okay, so we're going to add our onions into this. We're going to put our garlic. And we're going to add just a little vegetable broth. And we'll just get those nicely moved around. Okay, our next, we're going to add our squash to it. Now you're using zucchini and yellow squash, right? The summer squash. A good, a good color, you know, mix up the colors. You can use either one by itself, but I like to put some color in there. I like mm -hmm. this dish is nice and colorful. Mm -hmm. In the fall, when winter squash is available, this dish would be delicious it, with butternut squash uh, or acorn squash. Okay, so we'll just stir this up a little. Okay. And again, we're eliminating the extra fat by using vegetable broth in this dish. That keeps the added fat from vegetable oil to a minimum. So we're gonna add our yellow squash. They sometimes call this crookneck squash as well because sometimes they have that little crookneck to it, okay? So we add our zucchini, okay. Yeah, that's good, it's looking really good there. Okay, so we'll just let this cook for a little bit more. At this time, I like to add our thyme and some jalapenos. Okay, have some diced already. If you didn't have fresh jalapenos, is there any spices, dried spices you could add? Well, you can use the dried chili flakes. That's common in the household, mm -hmm. chili powder little cumin, mm -hmm. those are all good things to add to it. It's great if you can get the fresh peppers because yeah. they contain some vitamin C. Yeah, serrano peppers are good as well if you don't have the jalapenos. We're at our, our bright colored tomatoes here. Okay. Our corn. And I'm using frozen corn today. Just if, you, if it's available when it's fresh, you can use those nice corn cobs and just take it out. Our pinto beans. Let's just put a little bit more stock in here. 
All right. Isn't that nice? Nice and colorful. So we'll just let this um, cook for a little while. Just put a, a little sea salt to this and a couple of grinds from our pepper. So we're gonna let this simmer for about 10 minutes. Okay, so let's take a look at our, our squash and our pencil beans here. Oh yeah, isn't that nice? Look at that. Oh, just a little bit more pepper here. There you go. That's beautiful. I think our squash is right there where I would want it to be. Not really um, mushy, where you have that nice crunch to it still. It's still holding its shape. Still holding its shape. The colors are, are vibrant. They're so like calling you, come on, dig in. <laughs> I want you to taste me, right? You know? Okay, so. So what are we serving this with? We're gonna serve it over our couscous. Let's take a look at that, because I, I started this a little earlier, and what I did is just toasted our couscous, and then heated up some vegetable broth, and just uh, poured the hot vegetable broth right over our couscous, oh, and just covered the lid. It mm -hmm. takes about five minutes to cook. You can follow the package, though, um, the direction that's on the package. You can just basically do that. That's a good tip to use the vegetable broth just to add the flavor. That's right, because keep in mind, uh, water has no flavor. So if you can add flavor to something by using vegetable broth, that works, the flavor is there. See? Mm -hmm. Okay. So why don't you have me that plate right there and we'll, we'll add our, our squash to that. Okay. Look at that. Isn't that nice? And now couscous is actually a type of pasta, right? Right. Mm -hmm. This is a little pasta that they do like the steaming thing and then mm -hmm. dry it up again. And so we'll just put some of that right here in the middle. So it's not a whole grain. It doesn't have as much fiber when compared to brown rice or another whole grain, but it's still a great low fat choice. That's right. I think the sweetness of this would pair really well with millet. Millet, yeah, that's mm -hmm. another one that people seem to forget. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Okay, and that's basically it for this dish. Are you ready for dessert? Always. Okay, we have a berry applesauce coming right up. Evidence suggests that women with breast cancer whose diets are rich in fruits and vegetables tend to survive longer. Our berry applesauce is loaded with two cancer-fighting weapons, beta carotene and vitamin C. Well, our berry applesauce is very delicious as well. We're gonna start off with some nice apples that we've peeled, cored, and already cut up into pieces. Then we have a mixed berry here with strawberries, blackberries, and raspberries. Then we have some blueberries here, little cinnamon, and some apple juice concentrate. I already got a head start on this dish by adding our apples to here because they take the longest. So we've added some apples already into the pot. Now we're going to add our berry mixture. Did you put anything in the pot with the apples? Well, we just put a little, um, little of our apple juice concentrate in there. So I'll just add a little bit more to this. So I'm going to use a little of our blueberries now. Okay. We'll just get that in there. All right, we're gonna add a little cinnamon. And uh, another nice thing to do, if you don't want the, to see the cinnamon, is just to add a whole cinnamon stick in there. And then you can pull the cinnamon stick out and still yet have that nice cinnamon flavor without actually seeing the cinnamon. So it's a good way to, to have people go, mm, this tastes good, but what do I taste? <laughs> because they don't see the cinnamon powder in there. Okay, so we'll just give this a nice stir. So now that we are have this simmered here, let's mash them up. I like to do it right in the pot, just to mash it up here. Another thing you can use is you can use the food processor, but you might wanna let it cool down a little bit before you put it in the food processor to process it or you can just do it right into the pot. 
Now what I'm do here is just take my masher and just smash all this together. And you wanna make sure that the apples are nice and tender. So right when they're tender, that's when they're, it's ready to go. Would you like to taste? I'd love to. Okay. How is it? Mm, it's really good. Remember, it's easy to eat right for breast cancer prevention and survival. For more information on the Cancer Project and Food for Life, please visit cancerproject.org, foodforlifetv.org, or call 001-202-244-4000. To learn more about how a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and beans can help you prevent cancer. details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash VEG. Our green technology is not developed sufficiently yet. Being veg is the only option now to save the world. Premaster Ching Hai. With the world facing economic hardship and looming job deficits, a green revolution beckons. No, not a green energy revolution, a green food revolution. Organic, the future of farming. We can sustain the world and our nation's economies in dynamic health and vigor. Case study, Peru. In the South American country of Peru, the farming of organic crops has generated at least 33,000 jobs for farmers nationwide. According to Peru's Minister of Agriculture, Adolfo de Cordiva Vélez, interest in the practice continues to increase as farmers realize that organic growing is more profitable than traditional methods. In addition, the Ministry of Agriculture is providing support to 9,800 farmers to help enhance organic productivity. Uno de los motivos es para conservar el mejor de nuestro medio ambiente y así dar una producción sana para los consumidores. Yo te quiero mucho a nuestros compatriotas que consuman los productos orgánicos porque son sanos, que no traen ninguna clase de enfermedad.